So this is in theory review. I wrote an introduction to vectors. I'm teaching it as though you've forgotten everything. In physics, hopefully you may recall from last year, every quantity is either a scalar or a vector. Scalars have magnitude only, they only have size. Vectors have both magnitude and direction. As examples, uh, a displacement would be something like 6.5 kilometers due west, where a distance would be uh, 205 centimeters. Who cares what the direction is? Uh, velocity, we could do something like uh, 12 meters per second at 30 degrees west of north. Velocity was a vector. The scalar equivalent of velocity was speed. As a speed example, oh, I don't know, 35 kilometers per hour. Who cares what the direction is? The next one is acceleration. Acceleration is a bit of a strange one. Make up your own scalar if you want to for speed. Uh, acceleration is a strange one. Acceleration is a vector, although sometimes we treat it like a scalar. Sometimes we don't care about the direction. But there is no scalar equivalent. There isn't acceleration vector and something that's a scalar that we call acceleration. So acceleration, I wrote 9.8 meters per second squared down. Or often we show that with a negative sign in front of it. 22 seconds is a scalar. What measurement is that? Time. Time is a scalar. Well, I saw this movie once where they went back in time and it was, no, time is a scalar. Momentum. Momentum. How about, uh, you're going to close the door behind you this time? Thank you. That's preserved for internet posterity. I won't say his name, but everybody online is going to know some kid left my room and left the door open. Yeah, you're famous. Uh, how about uh, 18? There's a magnitude. Does anybody remember what are the units for momentum? You can figure it out by looking at the equation for momentum, but joules was energy. Good talk. Good. It didn't have its own units. It was just measured in something. Yeah, it was kilogram meters per second. And how about let's go at... 19 degrees south of east. There's a direction. <coughs> yep. That's as good as they're going to get. I'll never make fun of anybody for not being able to read my handwriting because it's messy. But it's improved in 14, 15 years, believe me. It used to be worse. Uh, volume is a scalar. Just has a magnitude. Volume, uh, 12 liters. What direction? Doesn't make sense. Force is a vector. How about uh, 18 newtons due east? The only thing you want to be careful with with force is because the capital letter N stands for newtons and it stands for north, often if I'm giving a direction after a force, I'll either put an at symbol or the word due or something so that I know, because if I wrote this, you might think that's 18 northeast, which wouldn't be illogical to assume. So how about at east or due east? Yes, that's another at symbol. Worker energy. What do you measure worker energy in? Joules. So how about uh, 300 joules. Now, we could have negative 300 joules. That was not a direction. What that was telling you is you were losing energy. It was a magnitude. Your magnitude's going down, getting smaller. We can add scalars like normal math, quote unquote, six kilograms and eight kilograms. And that's 14 kilograms. No big deal. Ah, but Courtney, to add vectors, we must add them vectorially. 
The first way that you could do this is the long way. It's the ugly way. We, we're, first of all, we represent vectors with arrows. One way of adding them would be to carefully draw them to scale using graph paper and a ruler and a protractor and carefully measuring your angles and drawing the arrows just the right length to scale and then adding them together and then measuring the resultant and measuring the uh. There's a better way. It's to use trig. A little note. Vectors are written in bold font if you're typewriting, but to handwrite and say, oh, I'll make it bold font is stupid and doesn't really work very well. So what we do in our handwriting is we use an arrow symbol. Speed, velocity. Although, Sam, over the years we've gotten lazy, we often just do kind of a little half arrow like that because you can do that with a whoosh. Those of you that take physics next year, you'll do this a lot more, but the magnitude is symbolized by that. Hey, uh, from math, what do those two vertical bars mean? Absolute. It's absolute value. Actually, what you were doing when you did that is you were saying, what's the magnitude of the number? Who cares about the sign or the direction? See, So we use that same thing in physics. Example one, John travels five kilometers west and then eight kilometers north. What's his resulting displacement? We could draw a scale diagram using a protractor, or better, we could use trig. To add two vectors, we draw them. Here's the key phrase we tried to drum into your head. Tip to tail. Ah, but then you chant the resultant r is from the tail of the first vector to the tip of the second vector. It looks like this. Example one. Um, I just turned the page. I better draw a compass here. Nathaniel, in example one, what was the first magnitude and direction that they gave me? Yeah. So that's going to look like this. Plus, what's the second magnitude and direction that they gave me? Eight kilometers long. I'm going to try and draw this roughly to scale, which means I'll draw the eight almost twice as long as the five, but not quite. How about like this? Ish. I wouldn't want to draw them the same length, because then my answer won't look anywhere near like what it's supposed to, and I might get scared and think I'm doing wrong. So I try. It's roughly to scale, Joe, give or take. Hey, Joe, how do I add two vectors together? Draw them. How do I add two vectors together? Draw them. I underlined it in the bowl in the... Oh, two to ten. Woohoo! Let's try that again. Scene one, act one, take two, and action. Joe, you're looking like you're really with it. Joe, pray tell. How would I add two vectors together? I would draw them. No, how would I add two vectors together? I would draw them. Same question. Oh, okay, we're going to try it one more time. Here we go. Scene one, act one, take three, and action. Joe, you're looking particularly with it today. How would I, if I wanted to, add two vectors together? Draw them. Good, you'll never forget it. What's it going to look like? It's going to look like this. Five and eight. You kind of have to visualize ahead of time where you're going to end up. Some people might want to draw the five up here. Well, you won't have time to fit the eight up, room to fit the eight up there. So kind of imagine what it's going to look like. And then the resultant, Joe, my friend, is from the tail of the first to the tip of the second. This is my displacement. If it's a lovely right angle triangle like this, I do agree with you, Joe. We can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In fact, I'll even say I'm good with in the homework. If you can go straight to your calculator right now, showing no work, and do the Pythagoras and get the answer to two or three sig figs showing no work, great. You can even do it on the test. I won't look for the work, Aleandro, although I might show the work on the test just to hedge my bets so I don't do a dumb mistake. But I'm actually going to go 8 squared plus 5 squared. Square root of 89, 9 point something. I get 9.43 units, Nathaniel. And I'm not done. All I've done is find the scalar. I found the distance. They asked for the displacement. 
at. Now the angle that I want is where I started from. And I always, if I'm trying to draw the angle, start from the closest horizontal or vertical line to where I started from. In this case, it's a horizontal line. That's the angle that I want. I'll call it theta. Before I calculate how big it is, what is this angle going to be? North of south, east of west? What of what is this angle going to be? Let's see. Start out going west and go north of west. It's going to be north of west. Let's try that again, Mr. Duick, this time without your pen conking out. How big? Well, opposite, adjacent. Which trig function? Tan theta equals 8 over 5. Inverse tan to find the angle of 8 over 5. 58 degrees? 58 degrees north of west. Example 2, F1 equals 10 newtons due east, F2 equals 6 newtons due south. Find the resultant if we add them together. So can you add force 1 and force 2? Try it on your own. I'm going to freeze the screen and I'll do it up here. Let's see if we end up with the same thing. See if you end up where I did. Some of you may have a different answer from me because I did mine a little unusually. We should all have the 11.7. Zach, it depends which one you drew first. On purpose, I drew the second one first. I figured most of you would draw the 10 first and then do the south, which is perfectly fine and valid. But I wanted to show you for what it's worth when you're adding vectors, it doesn't matter which one you draw first. Now, I think most of you probably got this instead. Most of you went like this, this way and then that way with your triangle and have that. Is that correct? Okay, perfectly acceptable. In fact, better because it probably is what I would have done. I would have gone in order. Um, you found this angle here. What's this angle here going to be? I can tell you. It's going to be 90 minus 59. 31 degrees, and it's going to be south of east. Yes? I would I take both answers. When you look at my answer keys, you'll see often I'll have one answer, and then underneath that I'll have its complement if you want the geometry term. All depends which one you draw first. Usually I draw them in the order that they give, me, give them to me, and so I would have drawn the 10 east plus the 6 north, sorry, 6 south, but I tried to uh, do it on, differently on purpose just to remind you that our diagrams can look different and still end up in the same place. So 10 divided by 6? Yep. Okay. Bear 
there with me? So, two possible answers. It really depends which way you draw them. Adding, it doesn't matter which way you draw them, Aleandro. In fact, often what may determine it is whichever, I'll try and think which one is easier to draw. If we add displacement vectors of length 3 meters and 2 meters, what's the maximum sum? What's the minimum sum? Explain your answer. Convince me. Hmm. Max. What is the maximum sum? Five. Is Vlad correct? Is he correct? Convince me. I agree. I don't know. Anyone. What would be a... Yeah. You know what? I think we'll, our proof is going to be a dulp. We're going to draw a little picture. I, I'm sure there's some kind of algebraic math. Ah, forget it. I think I'm just going to go like this. 3 plus 2. Sure, I'll take that. Picture sometime is worth a thousand words. Okay, what's the minimum? One? How would I draw that? I would still add them together. But I would add them together that way. Right? Uh, except they specifically said the lengths were 3 and 2. I'd be reluctant to introduce a sign in. Oh, could you flip them around and have a negative? Like 2 going that way and then 3 going that way. Hmm. I think when they ask for maximum and minimum sum, I think they're implying they want net positive, but yeah, you, you could make an argument that then negative five would be the minimum sum if you pointed them both to the left. But since they haven't given us directions, I think we'll go with this one. Good thinking, though. You're the first one to kind of go outside the box like that. Freak. I mean, yeah, cool. Next page. This is uh, actually what many of you who take physics next year will be doing. We don't add three vectors at a time here in grade 12, but it's really not that tough. The other thing we don't do is we don't multiply vectors. How do you add two vectors together, Joe? Draw them. Tip to tail. Tip to tail. How do you multiply vectors? We don't teach it here in high school. The answer is there's two different ways. There's something called a dot product, and when you use a dot product, you get a scalar answer. And there's something called a cross product, and when you use a cross product, you get a vector answer. Cross products are very tricky. How many of you ever used a screwdriver? Okay. A screwdriver is a great example of a cross product because when you apply a vector force in this direction, the resultant is in that direction. That's which way the screw moves. It's actually a cross product. It's that cross that is that. We would say I cross J is K if we're going to give it directions. We don't do it here in high school. We have to work around it. In fact, we will work around it with something called a right-hand rule, and we get to magnetic fields and forces, and we'll kind of uh, keep our torque diagrams flat. But we can multiply by scalars, OK? Dylan, what do you think 2A would look like? As a picture, what would it look like? OK. You know what? Let's eyeball it. How about? About like that? OK. Yeah. And then they want me to add B. Joe, how do I add two vectors together? Draw them. So let's add B. B. Then it wants me to add half 0.5 C. What do you think 0.5 C would look like? The same as C, but what? Half as long? So about like that. 0.5c. I don't know what the numbers are, but I can certainly draw it. There's my resultant. That's where you'll end up. I would need more information to actually solve this. And to solve this, I couldn't do it three vectors at a time. I would probably add the first two together using Pythagoras and Sokotoa, get an answer, draw it and then add this guy on. But then I would have lost my right angle triangle by that time, and so I'd probably be pulling out the sine law or the cosine law or some yuckiness. Not interested right now. But I can draw it. In fact, I can even do vector math with different directions. 
with Physics 11. It says this, an object is initially moving at three meters per second east. It accelerates south at 1.5 meters per second squared for four seconds. Find the final velocity by using VF equals VI plus AT. Okay. I've turned the page. I'm going to draw a compass rose because the number of times I've done this wrong would astound you. Sam, what does this question want us to find? Okay. And that equals VI. Sam, what is VI? Magnitude and direction, please. Like that? Plus? Rob, what's the acceleration? Magnitude and direction. What's the time? Let's go. Before we come back to the direction, so what would four accelerations be as a magnitude? Because you said it's uh, AT, so four times 1.5 would be? So the line's going to be six long. Which direction? Because that's which way the acceleration was. I'll draw it twice as long-ish, because the three and the six. Oh, there you go. We didn't do this last year, but... Aleandro, the formula of the equation works for vector stuff, too. How would I add those two together, Joe? Hey, let's draw them tip to tail, shall we? Over here? All year? Absolutely. I guess the V final is going to be the resultant, which is right here. It's a lovely right angle triangle. Good, find it, solve it. Magnitude and direction, please. Let's see if we end up at the same spot. Square root of 45, 6.7. I got that, but I went in a hurry. I could be wrong. Or am I? No? I'm good? Okay. A little unusual, Zach. We never really thought about plugging in vectors into these equations, but it, it works. It's a great question. Cole asks, is it usually going to be tangent that we use? Most of the time, but not all of the time. Like 70, 30. So, not enough to even say, when in doubt, use tan, eh, but yeah, frequently. Example three. Example three. I like this question. 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 Rob, why would I say that? <coughs> Sorry, what? Did you hear me say it was going to be on the test? Or are you the kind of student who notices when a teacher tends to emphasize certain things in class and you make a little note to yourself that maybe this is worth studying and pay attention to? Are you one of those kinds of students? Say yes. Sure. Okay. I like this question. An airplane, it says, has an air velocity or engine velocity of 200 meters per second due north. You know what? There's directions. I'm going to draw a compass rose. There is a wind blowing of 60 meters per second at 35 degrees south of east. You know what? I'm betting this is not going to be Sokotoa right angle trig. You know how I know? That's 35. What is the plane's ground velocity or engine velocity relative to the ground? Fellas, leave it. Stay back here. Falling behind to get caught up is silly. Up here now. I'll find out what was it we're using it later. Okay. So, Zach, here's my argument. 
the engine velocity, whatever the jets are pushing it forward at, vector, combined with the wind velocity, whichever way the wind is blowing, vector, equals, that's what the radar picks up. Is that okay, Ashcon, so far? Okay. I'm going to draw the vectors underneath each expression before I go to the triangle. What's the engine velocity, magnitude, and direction show? Um, 200 north. 200 north. So it looks going to kind of like uh, oink. Plus. Shoshan, what's the uh, wind velocity, magnitude, and direction? <coughs> south of what? South of what? South of what? For a reason. If, if I'm drawing a what of what, I always draw the of part first. South of what? I'm going to draw a dotted line pointing east like this. Which direction of east do they want me to go? Ah, so I'm going to duck down south. How many degrees? I'm trying to teach this how I draw these, okay? I always do, do the of part first and then say, well, what direction of do they want me to go? South, 35 degrees, about that big. And you said it was 60, where that angle is 35 degrees. See how I put that together? So if they give me a weird one, Nico, a, an of something, of what? Of what? I'll draw that first as a dotted line, and then go the first thing direction from whatever the of was. Joe, how do I add two vectors together? Draw them. So this one's going to be a bit yucky. First of all, 260. I'll try and draw the 60 about one third as long, because 60 times 380, about one third as long, because I want to be roughly to scale. Uh, 200. Yoink. 60, yoink. Resultant. There's the ground velocity. Clearly chase, not Sokotoa. But I do need an angle. Chase, the only angle they gave me was this one up here. How big is this one up here? And I'm pretty sure what they're saying is this angle right here is 35 degrees. Ah. How big is that angle inside the triangle then? 55? How'd you get that? You're right. Oh, those two add to 90. Oh, okay. I've already identified this is not Sokotoa right angle tree. This is sine law or cosine law. If it was sine law, there would be a pair. Is there a pair that we know both of, an angle and its opposite side? There is, Sebastian, which one? No, I don't think there is. So is this sine law? This looks like a job for cosine law, right? Uh, what's the cosine? Okay, this is the one from our formula. Oh, it's... Uh, Something squared equals something. Okay, this is it's going to be vg squared equals 60 squared plus 200 squared minus 2 times 60, 200 cosine of the angle across from the mystery, uh, 55. Don't forget to square root because you're finding vg squared. What's the magnitude of the ground velocity, the ground speed, the rel speed relative to the ground? <coughs> and square root. I get 172.72, blah, 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 173 to two or three sig figs. Yeah. I 
you didn't get that, you zig. I didn't get 29,000, I got Okay, hang on, don't clear your calculator. Continue. Uh, so I got, I'm going to write 173, but I'm going to keep this number on my calculator. So I got 172.72, 173 to two or three sig figs, but I'm going to keep the big decimal value on my calculator because I'm going to be using that later because that's the magnitude. I need to find an angle. At what? I look at my resultant. Joe, I go back to where it starts from, which means, uh, and I go to the either horizontal or the vertical line where it starts from. In this case, it's a vertical line. I tilt that way to get to my resultant. I don't know what the angle is going to be, but I can tell you what the what of what's going to be. It's going to be north of south, east of west, what of what? What is tilting this way? I think I disagree. I agree with the east part. East of north, east of north isn't it? Yeah. Go north first. Go east of north to get to there. Right? Because this is pointing north up here, isn't it? So I'll leave a space for the angle, but it's going to be east of north. Oh, and let's put a little theta right there. This is still not Sokotoa. It's the job for the sine law. Because, Sebastian, now I do have a pair because I just figured out what that is, what the ground velocity is, which means now I know both of those. And even more convenient, I have this number not rounded off stored on my calculator. See, that's why I said don't clear your calculator. It's going to be the sine of our mystery angle divided by what's across from it, what's across from theta. 60 equals the sine of the angle that I know divided by what's across from it, which at first I didn't know, but now I've done the math, uh, 172.72. But I'll even use the exact value on my calculator. I'll cross multiply to get the sine 60 by itself. Uh, sorry, the sine theta by itself. I get sine theta equals 60 sine 55 divided by 172.72, 60 sine 55 divided by, and I'm going to use the answer feature on my calculator, because that way, Emily, I haven't rounded off at all. And I, what? Oh, that's not theta. That's the sine of theta. How do I find the angle? inverse sine, and I'll use my answer button again. I think I did a rant on the first day about why it's useful to get a decent calculator. Oh, those of you that want to rent graphing calculators, talk to me later. Those of you that had Math 12 with me last year, for example. Uh, I get 16.5 degrees. Is that right? Did I mention I like that question? I like that question? I like that question? OK. Sorry? I don't know. Look up. Read. That would make a good written question on test. Uh, if I wanted to make it easier, I would have the wind coming in at a nice 90 degree angle so you could use Sokotoa. But it's fair game for it not to be this year. It's fair game for me to expect you all to be able to handle stuff. Now, if you're a little shaky on the sine law and the cosine law, you do have an option. Turn the page. You could break this whole thing into components. You could break every velocity vector up into a VX horizontal and a VY vertical, and that would all be Pythagoras and right angle Sokotoa trig. Then you could list them all, and you could add together all the horizontal components, and because they're in the same direction, you'd be able to add them up standardly without drawing pictures. You could add together all the vertical components, get uh, a new resultant. It's a lot more work, in my opinion. So Chase, here's the deal. If you 
really are uncomfortable with the sign law, the co-sign law, if you come see me after school sometime this week, I will walk you through this page using components. But I'm also going to try very hard to nudge all of you into the wonderful land of the cosine law and the sine law. Because I know for a fact, when we do momentum, the cosine law, you get the question done in about four or five lines as opposed to 12. I'm lazy and I'm willing to learn a tougher skill if it lets me be lazier. So you get the same answer. I prefer the tip to tail method. You get full marks for either. Use whichever one you like best. Next page. So we know how to add vectors. Joe, how do we add two vectors together? Draw them. How do we subtract vectors? It's a trick question. The short answer show is we don't. OK, I have to take that back. Some of you next year, if you take first year physics in university, your prof may give you, there is actually a rule for subtracting vectors. And my prof, when I was in physics, taught me a rule, and I still remember it. But I've found that it's about 50-50 among profs teaching the rule, and the other half just say, eh, why teach you a brand new rule when, instead of subtracting vectors, what can I do? Well, this is what you were getting to. I can add the opposite, right? I can add the opposite. So instead of me going vector A minus vector B, I'll go vector A plus negative B. And all negative B is going to involve is flipping the vector. Oh, and then I can add them again tip to tail. Like example three. A plane's ground velocity, or velocity relative to the ground, the radar picks it going 240 meters per second due east. The wind is blowing at 80 meters per second due south. What is the plane's air velocity with respect to the air? Which way are its engines pointing, and how fast are they pushing? Well, we said this. If you take the plane's engines, its air velocity, and you add the wind velocity, you get the ground velocity. I guess if I want to find the air velocity, I need to subtract this guy to that side. I get air velocity equals ground velocity minus wind velocity. In fact, I get this. How do I add two vectors together, Joe? Draw them. How do I subtract two vectors, folks? I don't. I'm going to add the opposite. I'm actually going to go like this. Ground velocity plus negative wind velocity. And I usually leave a big space so that the negative stands out just so I don't miss it accidentally because my brain is dumb. Courtney, what is the ground velocity, magnitude, and direction, please, from the question? You know what? I've turned the page. I'm going to put a compass rose here. 240 east. Yoink. 240. Plus. Courtney, what's the wind direction originally? The direction only? What's negative wind? What's negative south? And what's the magnitude? Ah. Courtney, is this going to be Sokotoa trig? Are these at nice right angles to each other? Oh, so this is going to be like Pythagoras and Sokotoa. Oh, great! How do I add two vectors, Joe? Draw them. Yeah. Well, let's do that, shall we? I think the answer is going to be this. 240, and I'll draw the 80 about one-third as long, because I think that's how the math works. I want to be roughly the scale. I guess this is the direction that the engines are pulling. Oh, and I'm pretty sure, Ashcan, I'll be finding that angle theta there. It's going to be north of east, I think. Yes? Good, solve it. Let's see if we get to the same spot.
and <coughs> excuse me, Graydon, you'll notice uh, it is tangent again, but the last question, it was the sine law. So you were the one who said, is it always going to be tangent? Mostly. But we did use the sine law to find an angle last time, didn't we? Uh, I got that. See if you get the same thing. I could be wrong. I'm good. Next page. I love Foxtrot comics. 243 meters per second at 18.4 degrees north of east. Uh, east of north would be if you drew the 81st and then the 240. You would have that, and that would be east. Whoop, I erased it accidentally because this pen is still giving me trouble. That would be east of north, and it would be whatever 90 minus 18.4 is. So 90 minus 18 is 82 minus 0.4, 81.6 degrees east of north, since you asked. I love Foxtrot Comics. I don't know if any of you read it. It's one of the ones I subscribe to online as well. The reason I like it, Zach, is Bill Ammond, the author, actually got his physics degree in university. And while he was in university in his physics classes, he was often doodling, and some of his friends said, you know, some of these are pretty funny. You should try and publish these. And what I love is, first of all, he, he does speak to my inner nerd, and the math and the physics that he brings out is correct. For example, so his youngest, the youngest boy in the family, Jason, is an uber-mega-nerd. Jason is playing football with his older brother, Peter. Peter says, Jason, what pattern did I tell you to run? And Jason says, you said to go 10 yards out, then 10 yards to the right. And what pattern did you run? I went 10 root 2 yards at a 45-degree angle. And are they the same thing? Well, if you have the vectors, sure. This is football, not math class. Why do you think I round it to decimal places? So there's the first one. This one's also really good. Jason's playing quarterback. He says, okay, here's the play. Go 40 yards downfield, then turn left and go 20 yards, then turn right and go 25 yards, then turn right again and go 30 yards, then turn right and go 30 yards, then turn left and go 10 yards, then turn left and go 15 yards, then turn left and go 20 yards, then turn left and go 50 yards, I'll hit you with the ball. Peter thinks for a while. Won't I be right back where I started? Well, I can't throw very far. Okay, here's the new play. I never get to be quarterback. I have, on other days, taken my whole class out to the field, and we have run this play, and it is a net vector sum of zero. It does, the math is correct, by the way. It's great. We won't today. You guys look kind of dozy. Okay. Foxtrot comics, they're great. Uh, 